Dobar den, J Prime. Okay. So before starting my presentation, I will ask for your help. So when I make questions, I don't see your hands, so I will ask you to make noise. So if you want to raise your hand because your uh, answer is a Boolean true, then please do some noise. Fine? Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, let's start. So, Java in 160 milliseconds looks like pff, impressive. Is it looking impressive for someone? Okay. Pfua. Okay, so now that we have this number on, on our hand, on our brain, this presentation is going to be about migrating Spring Boot into Quarkus. Is there anybody here that doesn't know anything about Quarkus? Let's try again. Is there anybody here that doesn't know anything about Quarkus? Fine. <laughs> Let's. Let's get the challenge. So, well, who am I? This is the agenda. Now I will show you. And what can you expect from this presentation? So, if it, doesn't not, uh, if it does not fill your expect expectations, rooms are on the back. Um, then I will explain why I decided to migrate. So, I had several other things to do at home. So, I decided to migrate one application. Seems weird. Then I will show you which are the different steps to migrate a Spring Boot application. Finally, that's the highlight of the presentation, is the performance comparative. Let's see which are the numbers. And in the end, I will give you some references if you want to just explore more this, this topic. So that's me. And you can get my uh, contact if you scan that QR. So I'm Java champion because I've been uh, involved in the Java community since 2012. I'm also community-driven because I'm uh, one of the leaders of the Barcelona Java user group since 2012. And I'm also co-founder of JBCNConf last year with more than 1,000 attendees, and now it's rebranded to DebBCN. I've been speaking in several conferences, uh, and now, uh, hopefully for me, at J Prime. I've been developing more than 30 years with lots of different languages. Some I like some I dislike. And as a professional, I've been working for Red Hat, Tetrate, Okada Technology, Netcentric, and now I'm develop developer advocate at Sonar. Does anybody know Sonar Cube, Sonar Lint? Perfect. So, for those that, of you that don't know anything about Sonar, Sonar is a company that provides uh, static analysis tools free. You can use them on your IDE, Sonar Lint. There are several IDs that you can use. It will analyze different languages, not only Java. Sonar Cube is a, some, uh, a tool free also. You can download it uh, for the community edition. And it will analyze your code, and it will show you which are the issues and the problems. And Sonar Cloud, that it is free for uh, public repositories. So everything is uh, SaaS, let's say. So what can you expect from this presentation? Well, basically, my experience. It's my uh, migration. It's an well, it's redundant opini opinionated opinion. <laughs> Obviously, it, this is not a magistral lecture. I'm not. I'm not here to teach you anything. I'm just showing my experience. Take what you want from my experience. Something that works. Oh, sorry. Something that works. I tested. I ran it. Fine. Some of you are following the Mandalorian. One, two, okay. The rest, you should, you should follow it. This is not the way. So this is only one way of doing things. In my presentation, I will, you will find screenshots from arcade games when I was a kid, time ago. If you want, you can just be, try to be the first one to tweet after the presentation with all the names of the games that you find here. So first, a brief introduction to Quarkus. It's a Kubernetes native Java, but also Scala and Kotlin framework that will allow you to compile 
your application. Uh, for uh, hotspot, so OpenJDK, or for native with Graal VM. We will see what it is a native thing afterwards. And also that uses tons of open source libraries. So it's not reinventing the wheel, just simply using Kafka, Hibernate, Rest Easy, Vertex, but tons of them. So you don't need to, to think about any other special thing. And the point of Quarkus, so why they decided to create Quarkus? Because they want to be, they want to have a framework that makes applications to go way faster, to be way smaller. Also, that they are not going to force you to, want to learn new tricks. And it's open source, obviously. They also have fast-paced releases, so you will find versions of Quarkus every two weeks, lots of them. And again, there are tons of extensions. Regarding extensions, more than 600 extensions. I mean, you can use, I don't know, uh, lots of libraries that you can use or that you were not using, but they are, there, they are um, open to use, and you can select them from their extensions website. Kafka, Camel, Keycloak, Jagger, and even Spring. About the Quarkus evolution, well, they started uh, late 2018, but they have released lots and lots and lots of releases. Now, there's the uh, 304 released uh, this month, but you have lots of them fixing bugs and introducing new features. And this is a, uh, an image that you will find in a lot of places when you search for Quarkus, where you can see um, an application that is taking um, 136 megabytes in memory with a regular framework, green one, I'm not going to say which one. Um, and then if you use Quarkus on the JVM, because I said before that you can use JVM and also native, if you use JVM, you are going to reduce it by half. But if you go to native, and let's see afterwards what the, does it involve to go to native, it will take only 12 megabytes. Regarding a startup, okay, doing the same three steps, we go from nine seconds to less, so 42 milliseconds. So that's, those are impressive numbers. So let's see if this really is what I found. Quarkus status, more than 800 contributors. Uh, as I said, tons of extensions. Even there is an open repo that you can provide your own, repository, your own extension. And they uh, solve and introduce new bugs constantly. So it's a very live, uh, mature project. Oops. Oh, OK. So let's see the migration. I hope that some of you know which is this game. I hope. I invested a lot of money there. Um, so Spring Boot, why I decided to migrate from Spring Boot? Because for me, Spring Boot was always, uh, although it was super easy to develop things, it had super long startup times and eternal tests. So when you want to run all the tests, it takes ages. It's heavyweight because you create your application and it will consume a lot of memory. And this is also another thing that I didn't like. It's that there are too many things under the hood that you don't know that they are happen happening. But when you see the log, you will see several services that you don't know why they are running. Is it uh, someone here, is it aligned with my feeling or nobody is aligned with this feeling? You, OK, perfect. You, you, OK, I'm not alone. Um, so I read that Quarkus is easy to develop applications. It's fast, lightweight, because it produces applications that do not consume a lot of memory. And also, it is GraalVM compatible. That's awesome. Why? Because then I can produce native artifacts that I will deploy into a serverless system. 
then I can go to FAS or function as a service, serverless, or even increase the cluster density, putting more applications in the same resources. Sounds amazing. So I decided to take one application from Spring, Spring uh, Pet Clinic REST, and migrate it. And in the Spring Boot, we have several libraries that the project is using, so I needed to move to other libraries that are not from Spring. So which are the steps that I did in order to migrate? Very easy. I will tell you some of them. Regarding CDI, just only replacing um, AutoWired by Inject, that's it. And everything uh, was uh, working. Also changing um, the, the bin and adding application, um, application scope instead of the component or bin. Or, um, <clears throat> so it was easy, just string replace and no, no problems on it. It worked. Only that with Quarkus, we cannot have private members on the injection. But for the rest, it's, uh, it's easy. With JPA repositories, well, it was a matter of changing which is the, the class. In this case, Panache repository. I, I went to Panache repository base just because the default identity uh, object is long and Spring was using an integer, but it was very easy just changing um, the class that repositories were implementing. So nothing, nothing complicated here. Then I needed to migrate from Spring REST to JAX RS. That is a standard library. Well, we need to change several annotations, especially if you are using the request mapping that in, in, one, in one annotation you have the three elements but it's a matter of just replacing, string replacing. So at the moment, I've been only doing string replacing. With the Spring REST security, well, there's, there was only one problem that uh, for uh, Quarkus, I was not allowed, well, I didn't know how to um, constrain the roles allowed. As you can see here, in the pre-authorized in Spring, you can um, have expressions. With Quarkus, you have to define a list of roles that are allowed. You, at that moment, at least, you couldn't have expressions in the, in the roles. Also, the security, in this case, uh, was persisted in a database, so the users, passwords. Uh, it was easy, just using um, Elitron, and it's a, a matter of adding a dependency, and in the properties file, just uh, configuring which is the query to get the user and the password. <clears throat> the cross origin, it's a matter of simply adding a property in the properties file, and that's it. Oops. Okay. Nice. Um, with metrics, well, in this case, the Spring um, project was using um, AOP. Anybody is using AOP here? <laughs> okay. Okay, it's very powerful, but also a bit complicated. But with AOP, you can have annotations in, uh, that are covering several methods. And every time that a one method is called, then your uh, logic will be called also, before or after. Spring was using that in order to get metrics. So every time that you call a repository method, just simply, I will take the time, and then when you leave, I will uh, do a subtract, and then that's the time that it took to do the, the query. We don't have that with uh, Quarkus. There's no AOP in Quarkus. So we can just simply use small write metrics, and then annotate the methods that are going to be uh, measured. This is tough. There are lots of them. But we will see another way of doing this. Even you can use uh, the micrometer annotation, and then it's uh, transparent too. For validation, we need to move from uh, controller advice to JAXRS uh, exception mapper. You can see 
the difference in the code here that both methods are quite similar, but a bit different. So you need to code uh, this part. Re regarding Swagger, so you want to have your API documentation. In the case of Quarkus, you just simply add some properties to the properties file or create a, a class that contains the information for your API. And then it will scan all the endpoints in your application and will, and will create the, the documentation for the API. As I said before, there is no uh, AOP for, for Quarkus. Therefore, we need to annotate all the methods just to get the metrics from them. That's tough, but what we can use is a property in, for Hibernate that will then put all the metrics of the access to the database into the uh, log file. So you will get all the metrics but with just only adding one line in the, uh, in the properties file. With local caching, is exactly, well, it's too similar. So it's only just replacing one class for another. And it's the, the same way that the Spring does. So you will have a method with the annotation to be catched. And then in this case, you put a name to the catch. And you can configure even the properties for the catch in the properties file. With tests, that's a bad, bad thing. We need to recreate the whole code. So with Spring, there's uh, mock MVC, but with uh, Quarkus, you need to go to Rest Assured. For me, it's more clear to, get, to use Rest Assured, but well, it's a matter of taste. With test resources, in this case, this application, when you test it, it is starting an H2 uh, database. And with Quarkus, it's very easy. Just simply annotate the test with this Quarkus test resource, and then it will start an H2 database for you, and your tests will connect to that. And for uh, testing with Mokito, it's a matter of adding the inject mock that it is different from the spring one. Is anybody sleepy already? OK. Nice. So forget everything that I said. It's not worth it. That's the point. So if you want to migrate your application from Spring Boot to Quarkus, just simply use the, Quarkus, the Spring extension. So with the Spring extension, you don't need to touch anything in your code. You just simply use the Spring extension for the Spring ADI, DI, sorry, for the Web API, for Data JPA, for security, for cloud, everything. It's a matter of just simply changing the dependency. And uh, the interfaces are the same, but the implementations are from Quarkus. Then you don't have to touch your Spring Web application because that it is, it's supported by Quarkus. You think you are using Spring, but you are not using Spring. Um, this happens with uh, several extensions that you don't have to touch your Spring application, just simply change the, the dependency in the POM, and then you will have your code. Well, you need to check, because some of the extensions are not covering 100%. So if in, uh, you need to check if there are corner cases that the extension is not covering. We have also for the Spring Data, and in this case, even we can use these methods that will be translated into a query. I don't like them because it's, it can be super, super tricky when you start doing exists book by year of birth between and join with. That's, that's complicated. I prefer to have uh, real queries. But if you have them with this, ex with this extension, you can even uh, don't have to touch it. Security, the same. And in this case, even it is uh, considering the roles on the security on the, on the methods. 
So <clears throat> what I did was to take that project, migrate the project to Quarkus, and check. The thing is that building the project, well, is, I, I'm, not, I'm not concerned about building the project. It's something that will do CI, not me, so I'm not, uh, I'm not concerned. But yeah, there's a difference in time, especially if you go to Quarkus native using Graal VM. It will take a lot of time, and also it will consume a lot of memory during the process. But the thing is that when we have the different artifacts, so the Spring Boot one used with the Java virtual machine, and then we have the Quarkus one using the Java virtual machine, and finally, the Quarkus native. So just only for using Quarkus, we see that the time is half of it, and that the memory is also half of it. So just only moving to Quarkus without doing anything special and running on JVM, we are going to reduce. What does it mean? That we can increase the density of our cluster. So we can now have 100% more, uh, so more applications in, with the same resources. But if I create a native application that it only takes me adding dash p native in the command line, I will go from three seconds to 160 milliseconds. And I will go from 242 megabytes to 80 megabytes. The only difference is using Graal VM to produce the native artifact. And it only involves adding dash p native in the Maven command line. But recently, Spring Native has released Spring Boot 3, and they also have support for creating a Spring, uh, so native artifacts from Spring. I tried, and I didn't succeed. Probably I haven't tried enough. So I will try more and see if I can create a native artifact from the Spring Boot uh, Pet Clinic REST. Just simply go and try it, and you can share your experience. So some of the references that can help you if you want to see more about uh, Quarkus. Obviously, the GitHub repository for my migration. You can find it here and the original one. And also, the Quarkus main page, where you can see, well, uh, lots of documentation, references. And even, you can go to the uh, Quarkus uh, website, and you will find uh, interactive tutorials. So you are using a platform called Katacoda, and you don't have to install anything. It's going to run all on, on cloud, free. And you can do some tests or uh, tutorials with, with Quarkus in different topics. Also, there's a cheat sheet, a document that it is updated with every release of Quarkus, and then you will see different uh, changes and the new features that are going uh, being added to uh, Quarkus. And finally, if you want to start coding, the same as with Spring, you go to uh, code.quarkus.io, you select which are the dependencies that you are going to use, and it will create a, a zip that can be just downloaded, and you can start coding from that. What question? Don't know. <laughs> Don't know. You can check also these real use cases. So different companies that migrated from Spring Boot to Quarkus in order to, to improve the productivity or reduce the, the money invested on, on their platforms. It's, it's nice to check because they, they tell what they do and why. So it's been, so this is it, as Michael Jackson said. Um, if there are any questions, if not, thank you very much for being here. Tell, tell me and I'll repeat. So 
<laughs> so the second question is about Micronaut. Have you compared it to Quarkus, and what do you think about that? And the second one, is there an approach to migrate Spring Boot app to Quarkus continuously, not discrete? So I mean, uh, I want to change it step by step, and once uh, I just switch it, and that's it. First, first question about if I've tried Micronaut and how it it compares to uh, Quarkus. No, I haven't. I haven't used uh, Micronaut. I have read about it. They had a different approach. They had their own libraries plus open source. I think there's a difference in the approach, uh, but it's it's also a, an amazing framework if you pretend to go to to native. So let's try it. Right, and, and see if their approach fits you. That's that thing. And the second one was about an incremental migration and not 100% migration, right? So yeah, but I think that uh, the extensions that you've shown actually uh, does this approach. So I just uh, replaced the dependencies, and theoretically, my whole app is now a Quarkus app, not Spring Boot app. But the thing is that um, for Quarkus to be so fast on uh, let's say in production or running, it's because a lot of time is consumed on the build process ahead of time compilation. So what it does is uh, it will analyze your code, it will mm, check, and it will flatten several things. Therefore, either you have Spring or Quarkus, because only one can be in the build time. Uh, so uh, about tests, uh, do Quarkus provide similar extensions for tests? So you, you've shown an example with mock MVC and you have to replace it with rest assured. Uh, can I just add some dependencies so I make mock MVC work with my Quarkus set without rewriting it all from scratch? Well, the thing is that when I, I showed the extensions for Quarkus, those are not exactly the regular extensions. Those are extensions optimized to work for Quarkus. So they reduce uh, reflection and other things. So in this case, as far as I know, they haven't done anything on the MockMBC uh, library. So if the library is not prepared to work with Quarkus, you cannot use it. OK, thank you. Welcome. Yeah, just a super fast question. If you are migrating, uh, like what is missing? Like all the runtime checks, reflection stuff, AOP is missing, Spring expression language is missing. What else, like in general, is, like condition on missing beans and stuff like that are not working as well, right? Because they are runtime. What else is like missing that usually you have in a Spring Boot project? Um, so basically, yeah. Yeah. Well, they are. They are you, is there a, like a list somewhere, or or do you have in your mind like the top five things that are missing that you struggled with? Apart from testing. Yeah, apart from testing, the testing is you can rewrite them. Okay. It's not a big deal. Well, it's more or not, less reading one, and you can yeah. hire a junior. You read the mock MVC. This is how it's done in Rest Assured. Just do it. Yeah. So you need to check um, because. Well, in your website, there are several extensions covering Spring. There are, so that's not the full list of extensions from Spring. I, I can't remember which are not there. Uh, yeah, but, but which of check. the features more of, of Spring are missing? Like the, you don't know. Okay, I'm not, I'm not aware, the, but it could be that there are corner cases. Yes, but it all depends. The regular ones? I yeah. didn't find anything missing. And the bomb, so the Quarkus has a bomb similar to Spring Boot bomb, basically, which is, I, I saw it's 2,000 dependencies. Is this updated every two weeks? Like, is there a new bomb for every two for weeks? Every, for, for every release, yes. For every, and, and the Spring extensions for Quarkus are part of the bomb, right? I, I saw one of them, the Spring DI, but I guess all of them are. So I, they I basically think so. check. I haven't checked, but yes, I think so, yes. Okay. Okay. But Thanks. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a matter of, of checking which are the needs of your real project and then check with Quarkus if it's covered or not. 
It could be that you need to do a workaround, you need to do another approach. Yeah, ju just a question. L let's say you have a platform where you have a lot of beans or whatever components, and you want to give the ability for customers to replace any of them. So right now in Spring, you will easy will do it like with conditional missing bean or whatever, like auto configuration where if there is no bean that is defined by the customer that hides my bean, then use the default one. Uh -huh. How if you do this with Quarkus, let's say you have one big jar with a lot of Spring uh, beans, sorry, and you want to give the possibility to the customer to replace any of them, is this gonna even work? But if you are using, so what you cannot do is use the dependent gene injection from Spring context in your Quarkus. No, 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 ignore the Spring. So let's say you have currently a Spring Boot project with, I don't know, you, you built something that has a basic store, let's say, a basic functionality. And you give the possibility to, to a customer to replace any of your beans yeah, with his bean. But, but the, core, the core still is... Spring no, no. Let's say you migrate the core to Quarkus. Okay. But now you have for each bean you have an interface. Uh -huh. You have a bean defined in your jar, and then you have a bean defined in 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 the other project. Is Quarkus gonna work? Yeah, like? that's that's the regular. But you don't extend the the middleman. You you just implement the interface. You don't know the. Yeah, that's. Okay. That's okay. what dependency injection is. So, ah. I mean, yeah, you can use the default. Yeah, but the thing is, I was thinking the because bin. it's compile time, it needs to know the order. In, in Spring, kind of, you can have an order. Okay, while, I see you. And you can make an order to say, like, like, what is the latest bean that I want to use? While in Quarkus, everything is more like flat. So, yeah. It's a good question. Also, in Spring, there is the order, but it doesn't actually work like order. Is there something similar in Quarkus? Like, can I put an order 900, and then I know this is the... No, but because the, the artifact produced is uh, needs common. to know. It's, uh, yeah. I don't... Yeah, I, don't I will know. check. I will check. Okay, thank yeah, you. Yeah, no, no, no. Thank I don't know. I haven't checked that option, but good question. Uh, just a... I made a joke, but the, the most important two words that I've heard of all the theory out of, of Nyland was ignore Spring. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions? But the J Prime website, the J Prime website still runs on Spring. But we can migrate it, by the way. <laughs> Are there any tools which help you to migrate from Spring to Quarkus? Just not like extension, it's about migration. You mentioned that it simply replaces the annotations or add something. Are there any tools? Because yesterday one of the speakers talked about open rewrite to it's allowed to maybe in one or may, not in one, in two clicks <laughs> migrate from Spring. I don't, I'm not aware, I think, uh, there is still no recipe for migrating from Spring Boot to Quarkus, but when I was working for Red Hat, I was part of a team with a tool, open source tool that you can download, that it has a recipe to migrate from Spring Boot to Quarkus. This project is called WindUp, or Migration Toolkit for Application. What it will do is to analyze your source code, and it will show you which are the changes that you need to do in order to migrate from Spring Boot to Quarkus. Hello, I have a question <clears throat> more from your experience and your real project. Do you use native in production or in all environments or you use the hotspot? Yeah, in my case, I haven't, oh yeah, I had once, yes, uh, once in production, it was, uh, in this case, we were using Quarkus to create a Kubernetes operator and we were producing the native artifact in order to be deployed, and we were running it. It was running fine, no issues, but again, it all depends. So I've heard that in some cases, the native artifact produced by GraalVM, it, it could have some issues on the throughput, but I haven't experienced that. In that particular case, it was not super important because it was simpler. Uh, 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 
a, Quark, a Kubernetes operator. But I don't know. Do I answer your question? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. No more questions? Okay. Thank you and have a good afternoon. Oh, you have one? Okay.